what is up everybody welcome back to the channel if it's your first time here make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button join our family show your support as well as make sure you hit that notification bell that way you can be notified every time we drop a new video talking about the notification bell if you're already part of the family make sure that notification bell is hit because youtube does this weird thing where it unclicks it so definitely make sure whether you're new or already part of the family make sure that bell is smashed now talking about new videos if you're new to the channel i recommend going over to the channel we're dropping new videos of new games every week talking about new games we're going to be continuing our journey through one piece pirate warrior three today uh, we're in chapter two part two we're going to be starting on the alabaster level all right so we're going to go ahead and get started the showdown at Alberty. I don't know. Uh, FYI, I butcher everything, okay? From names to places to people to their hometowns. I'm going to butcher it, all right? I'm not good with names. I'm just not. Enunciation, not good with that, all right? Just putting it out there. Also, another thing I'm going to put out there, if you've not watched One Piece, nor have you not played the game, you're going to have spoilers. I'm going to fill you in on everything that's happening in the anime at this point the game doesn't cover this game covers a lot of stuff in a short period of time like this guy right here with the question marks is part of Brioke works which is who is working on a crocodile and he is known as number two now why does that matter it's because he ate the copy copy fruit and basically whoever he touches with his left hand he can Return to normal, the power of the clone clone fruit. So he can basically turn into anybody. And they think it's super cool, but he has to touch you to be able to do it. At this point in time, they don't have a clue that he's number two. They don't have a clue that he's the enemy. Which is really cool. <sighs> this guy though, this number two man, he just... Him and Luffy, they're just, they're two peas in a pod, man. I don't know. They become really good friends, even though they're on the opposite team. Way further down the road. You know, the two on the sale really should have gave it away. Bro broke works. Did I say it right that time? Yeah, Mr. Two. All right, I'm going to explain that as we go through the story of this level i'm going to explain what the numbers and the breakdowns are i don't really remember all their abilities nor do i remember how they're paired exactly this is a while back um but i do know some of them so i will give out the information that i do know an x would be a good symbol why because we're pirates but the original was a way to mark in your opponent for death. It's fine. And X is fine, right, Vivi? It's good. Now, Vivi is the princess of Alabaster. And she worked with Baroque's works. I think I said it right that time. To go undercover because Crocodile is raging war, basically, in her country. And he is a warlord. And he's Mr. Zero. And his partner is Miss All Sunday which happens to be Nico Robin there we go we got Chopper up in there with his little bandage on that's the last person I would copy no offense Chopper his personality is just it's hard to fake him <sighs> All right, so for the most part, what what it is, is the world government really hasn't stepped in. So the way that the seven warlords work and all this in the great show of One Piece is it's pirates that are hired by the Navy to basically keep other pirates deterred or in line. The very powerful pirates. There's seven warlords of the sea. There's also four emperors of the sea. They're in the new world after you pass the red line, which I think is like the halfway point of the grand line. Um, but the seven warlords 
Uh, one of them are here. He's he's a crocodile. He's also uh, Agent Zero, I guess. Uh, no one knows who he is or has ever seen him. Uh, with that being said, there are the way the system breaks down and broke works is the lower your number, the stronger you are. Like number one uh, is basically a steel guy with you know can turn his arms into blades and stuff like that. And then the anime Zoro takes him on. Number two is Bon Clay, who Sanji ends up taking on. Um, then you have, I think Monday is paired with one, maybe Tuesday. Anyway, the days of the week are paired with the top five or six of them. Yeah, because number zero has Sunday. I think, I think number one has Monday. Like I said, I don't remember exactly who's paired with who. But I do remember that number one was paired with a woman that had spiky hair that you know she could stab people with. I know Chopper and Usopp ended up fighting a mole and either a gun or uh, yeah, it was like a dog gun or something, right? And this really big guy with a bat. Uh, and then it was all Sunday. Uh, Smoker is here as well. And he sees the corruption done by Crocodile. But it's like he can't intervene. He's trying to intervene, but he just can't. Um, his hands are kind of tied, and he goes to disobey the government. And at the end of it, he actually gets all the credit for it, even though it's Luffy who stops it all. Um, we actually run into another character here that's not really shown very much. It is, um, we run into Ace, which is Luffy's brother, but we'll get to that in a minute. There, um, if you didn't watch last week's video, I highly recommend going to watch it. Uh, there were some facts that I won't sure about, but I double checked them and I was right and wrong in a certain area. Um... The, one of the first towns they go to is like a cactus town. I was right about that. Um, one of the other towns that they go to before apparently getting Chopper, and I wasn't aware of this, I didn't remember this, was the fact that they went to um, Little Big Island or Big Little Island, something like that, Little Garden. And it's got two massive giants fighting on it. And basically, they were part of a pirate crew, their own pirate crew, giant pirate crew. And they challenged one another. And every day at a certain time, they go to fight and sell the score. And they've been there forever. Giants live longer, I guess, than regular humans or whatever. And um, the Baroque's works interfere and, like, put explosives in one of the barrels of drinks. It ends up wounding one of them, but they have too much pride to separate um, because they're, gr they're the great something pirates. And it just, it uh, ended up fighting Mr. Three there. And uh, I, remember, I remember this island pretty distinctly because I remember that Zora almost chopped off his own legs. Uh, they get on, so Mr. Three was a wax guy. He uh, controlled wax and he had this tower that uh, and basically slowly, if you're within the vicinity, coated you with wax and you would become a wax figure basically and Nami, Vivi and Zoro get caught uh, with one of the giants and Zoro's like alright giant you know can you still move and he's kind of got like he's kind of like pinned to the ground and has pretty much given up he's like I'm gonna chop off my legs and I mean this dude's just like insane he's legitly about to and right as he goes to do it, the giant starts to get up. And all of a sudden, Usopp and this yellow bird that travels with VV kind of looks like a chocobo from Final Fantasy. Um, just flat up shows up out of nowhere. And boom. Oh, there's Ace. Yeah, all right. So what's funny about this, I'll explain this once I get to this point, is that uh, um, Zoro already cut halfway through his legs, believe it or not. Uh, they ended up getting off the island, stopping number three, and then they meet number two on the way here. So that's accurate, but um, after the little garden, they end up 
going to Chopper. That's when we pick up Chopper, Drum Islands after that. And then after that, we show up in Alabaster. Now, what's funny about Alabaster is I think Luffy's being chased by Smoker. Yeah. And he ends up running through and basically runs over Ace. And Ace sees Luffy. And then Smoker, I guess, I forget what Smoker does. But anyway, they ended up meeting later. Um, he meets Luffy's crew and thanks him for taking care of his brother. And everybody's just kind of like, oh, he's part of the White Beards type thing. That's your brother. And it's just, it's, it's a kind of heartfelt moment. But that's pretty much, I'm pretty sure if I'm correct, that's the last time Luffy sees him alive before the war. Because they go separate ways. Um, Ace is tracking down, at, the, at this time, he's tracking down Blackbeard. Uh, or Teach. Um, but he, anyway, he comes across Luffy and he gets to meet the crew and everything. So that's pretty, that's a, it's pretty nice. But there's a lot, he doesn't stay around and help them with this. He doesn't help them against Crocodile. Uh, he doesn't help them against Smoker. And uh, number three does make it back to the island and is battling. I forget who his partner is. Um, I think number four is the burger dude I was thinking of. And then you, uh, at least up to number five, has days beside him, I'm pretty sure. The smoker's going to call HQ. But it looks like, it looks like he's going to, I'm not going to get to finish him off. It looks like he's already dissipated. Man, that sucks. Now there's Crocodile and Robin that's just popped up. And this battle, so the one thing I will say about Alabaster, when I watched it, I don't know if it's being reformed or I don't know how it is on streaming. Uh, I haven't really re-watched the series uh, at this particular point. But it took forever. I want to forget me and a, a, another friend were watching it. And it took forever. Like, the further you got into the battles of Alabaster because everybody was spread out, it was just the recap. The recap of the episode was forever. I mean, just forever. It was ridiculous. Like, absolutely ridiculous. It took like, at one point it was taking like five to seven minutes to do the recap. Then you had like five minutes of episode. Then you had the little middle thing that would pop up to let you know you're halfway through. Then you had like another five or six minutes. Then you had the ending, then the precap to the next one. It just drug on forever. But hopefully that's not the case. That was my only complaint about Alabaster was the recap. But besides that, fantastic. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and use my special. So if you don't know what's going on as far as all the numbers and stuff, if you've never played the game, let me give you a brief introduction right quick while we clear out these areas. It's a perfect time. The bar that you see now is a special that I triggered. Uh, we're fighting number one, so it's a good time to use it. Um, because if you use it, use the special during the rush on someone with a bar like that, you get more of their coins, you use the coins to level up. Plus, we use this when we're fighting because when you use this, the gold and blue number in the bottom right corner go up. Now, what is that? The blue numbers are your kills, the gold numbers or yellow numbers, however you see them, are your assist kills. Um, the bar over to the left now that you see that wasn't there earlier, when you build it all the way up to level 3, you can trigger a special. Why is that important? Because you got to keep an eye on it because it involves the ledger. Uh, the yellow bar that I just used under the blue bar is my special. Use the same button to trigger the special in the rush. The blue bar is my health bar. Okay, now, now what has that got to do with anything? It's just that's the bars. Now what the numbers have to do with, oh, we did 15, perfect. Um, uh, the question mark, let's hit the question mark because it doesn't pop up, probably, probably won't pop up anytime soon after this is the question mark or treasury events uh oh trying to flee all right so the great thing about trying to flee is he'll have a green circle okay and we're gonna go ahead and hit it so he doesn't flee but a lot of times you can pop off a special rush because when you hit a green circle it maxes out your assist bar all the way max so i should have went in and triggered it and then just use a special and then just redone his circle uh, I was I just didn't want him to flee because and then I'd have to start the whole level over because that's part of the ledger and it's also part of the uh, success rate. Each stage has a different success rate and different triggers. Different people fighting different people will trigger different things. 
Um, but the ledger is a little uh, three by three. Uh, five of those are ones playing on hard. The other four are playing on uh, getting S's, S ranks on the blue kills, the yellow kills, and the time, and then getting all three in one level. Uh, the other one is completing the level. The other one is the treasure event, so that's seven. The eighth one of the ledger out of nine would be beating the final person uh, with a special finale or finisher, which is when you're in the rush and you do the finisher. Uh, and then the eighth one is just depending on where you're at. Don't let no one flee. Beat someone twice. It just depends. You have to read it. There's no really rhyme or reason for it. Uh, in the earlier stages, it's not letting any villagers um let any villagers flee, which they don't have green circles a lot of times. You just gotta control the areas they're in and make sure they don't get overwhelmed, which can be some of a hassle, but you can do a lot of that on normal. The only reason you need to play on hard is to beat the level on hard. I think you get S ranks on normals. I'm not really sure. I haven't really played on normal. I play on hard the first go around to get it, and if I don't get my S's like I need to, which has only happened twice for time, I'll break it back down to, um, I generally just replay it on hard, uh, but as far as like treasure events and stuff like that, you can always go back and go to free play and just do them on easy, blow right through them to get to a special or specific event. Alright, Miss All Sunday, you gotta go down. Great thing about this though is we're gonna pick up, we're gonna pick up Nico Robin at the end of this, which is great. She becomes a huge asset, and the arcs leading up to this, after this, leading up to, uh, the time skip there's there's uh any's lobby is that, is it? yeah any's lobby and you just you learn robin probably has one of the saddest backstories for me and what she goes through and her self-worth and coming to the realization she got people that cares about her it's just when we get to it we'll get to it oh yeah so what so reason crocodile is using nico robin and why nico robin has such a troubled past is this right here the the pol the polygraphs not polygraph clip Plythographs, they're basically stones that are left around with ancient writing on them that no one's allowed to learn. It's against the law or world government to learn this. The island that Nico Robin grew up on as a kid studied this language and learned how to read it and they called a filibuster on it. And I'll get into all that when, when we get to that particular portion of the game and we get to those cutscenes. But short version is she can read them and she's the only survivor of the island. And he's, you know, there's a weapon, there's different weapons on certain ones. Some just tell the missing history, because there's missing history, and uh, the ponographs. Um, the ponographs are also how you get to the final island. Ponographs uh, fill in the history of the, I guess, the Dark Ages. There's like a hundred year gap that no one knows nothing about. There's also something to deal with people with the will of D. If you notice, Luffy's name is Monkey D. Luffy. Uh, port, uh, port, port, I can't pronounce his last name, D Ace. You got, uh, Tiger D Law. You got, uh, Teach. Teach has got a D. Gold Roger had a D. Um, so you have, you have some people with Ds, and apparently the will of D has always, uh, stirred up trouble, you know, and so, so the celestial dragons, uh, obviously, I'm pretty sure fear them. We'll get into that when we get closer to that as well. There's so much that I could just cover on in a basis of the anime but we need to focus on the level i didn't mean to get on such a sidetrack but each character has more to go through they're joining the crew or we're picking them up but they have what i would call their testament or their trial to tribulation uh for the crew uh to 100 percent part of the crew like nami for example nami uh joined the crew temporarily she was already part of the crew didn't want no help while they were on erlon park until Erlong did her dirty and had the Marine steal her money and she tried to stab the tattoo off her arm and asked Luffy finally for some help and Luffy set her free. You know, that was her testament. Um, they all have it and they all go through different things, some later, some sooner. Uh, and so it's hard to touch on a character without going into a little bit of the backstory, without going into what's coming up. So just bear with it. I don't mean to go on side rants. They, uh, there's all a purpose to the madness. To the madness. All right, so we've covered ledgers. We've covered all that. So there's great battles in this particular anime as far as the scenes here go. I have some uh, favorites. It's where Zoro learns to cut steel. 
which is really nice when he's fighting number one, which we've already defeated. Um, also, when, <laughs> when Ace and uh, Smoker and Luffy are all running and clashing with each other, it's pretty hilarious. Uh, I, I think Ace is probably stronger than Smoker at that time point, but it's not like a real, real fight. Uh, in the later uh, later episodes, it's hard to tell because Smoker grows so much, and obviously, um, circumstances change for everybody, and we'll cover that when we get to it. I don't want to give out too many spoilers for people who are possibly watching and uh, may not uh, may not want to know it yet. So, but it's all good. Looks like hopefully this is the last guy we're set up on a timer. I don't know if you've been paying attention to the timer or not. But hopefully, a lot of times when they got these uh, X's on the map for them, they're generally someone you have to beat. I don't think I have to clear all the territories. Alright, Zoro's trying to flee. Alright, we got rid of him. Alright, the timer's still going. Okay. Uh, maybe we have to clear the red area. But most important, we don't need him to flee. Well, what's, what, what's great about someone fleeing is you get a green circle. So if we run up on him and his, and his health's not too far down, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pop in here and pop off a finisher, and then we'll save Zoro. Well, we'll, uh, well, I went ahead and picked it up, so that'll be all right. I'm sitting at enough kills already. I don't have enough gold kills, uh, but I can use... When he's maxed out like this, or as long as he's past level 1, you can do different techniques and he's going to give you an assist attack. So I generally use the distance one with the long legs because it doesn't generally reach a lot of people and you can stay on the outskirts. And Zoro does an attack. So it's it's easier to pick up gold, gold kills that way. Now there's a full-on war going out in the anime at this point. That's just what you've seen her scream. Because Crocodile's been affecting the weather. And it's put a lot of torn tear between the surrounding countries on the island because it's a big island that are affected by different uh, by the weather and crocodiles controlling all of it so with that being said there's this ginormous rift and there's fighting amongst the people and people pretending to be broke works as like far as the townspeople or whatever and she's trying to get everybody to stop there's also a bomb involved and the king's there and he's trying to keep the peace, but his hands are kind of tied. And it's just... There's the polygraph. Now, Nico Robin's not going to give him what he wants. Because there is a weapon here. And she knows it. They found it. But no one else can read it. So he has to take it. He's looking yeah, for Pluton. History. Which is not true. Yeah. What's interesting about him, I think there's a lot more to him in, uh, in the anime, especially uh, an impel down and in the war that's coming. He plays an interesting key, and the actions that he takes are just interesting and the dirt that someone has on him is interesting as well so i wonder if more is going to come out about it and i think one of the main reasons luffy beats him this early on is because i think crocodile under underestimates him i think if crocodile would have been on his absolute best at this point i think it would have been a, probably a different outcome uh, not saying that Luffy couldn't beat a warlord at this point, but be, with his particular power, it should have gone a lot different. Um, not saying that Luffy couldn't have beat him, even if Crocodile was going 100% serious. I think Crocodile waited too long to go serious. I think he uh, was too cocky, and that was his downfall. But, you know, what are you going to do? I don't quite have enough kills yet. Well, it is what it is. I'm at the final dude now, so maybe 14. 
Maybe I'll get the 15, maybe I won't. Right. Oh, you just gotta I just keep working this bar down. Alright, he got starred. Perfect. I haven't unlocked it yet, but I know from playing with Ace and Dream Log, you can unlock like one that takes two yellow bars, which means it's stronger than just the one special. And you can uh, use it, uh, but you have to have two and it's you know does more damage. I haven't unlocked it for Luffy yet, but I've unlocked it for Ace. Alright, let's go ahead and knock him down a peg. Gonna go ahead and do the rush, but I'm gonna I'm gonna fight him this time in the rush and see if I can't knock enough of him down. Uh oh, that's a that's a lot of red area. Alright, dude, come on, finish. I don't want my rush to be wasted on you. Ow. All sand, huh? Alright. Oh, and if you cycle through people and build everybody up, when you do this, everybody is... That's part that you've used is is there. Now, I didn't get the kill, so I'm, I'm going to have to go back through it. But I already got to go back through it anyway. Um, because the treasure event is for Zoro and Sanji. Sanji to fight number two and Zoro to fight number one. So... See that sand can absorb water, but Luffy's already bleeding. It basically beats him to death with bloody hands. I think Luffy actually gets poisoned here, and Nico Robin gives him the antidote. And then she's just ready to die down there. Yeah, see, they've become friends. <laughs> Number two. Yeah, creepy. He's just creepy. So much happens here. <laughs> oh man, he he ends up he ends up being an important and a very important side character later on down the road. But he, he's he's an important character here. <laughs> oh, it's true. I never thought about that being a foreshadowing, but it is it is definitely true. Wow. And they do, they they definitely step it up so they can get away from the Marines. <laughs> Never forget you. That's not the last time you cry for him, my guy. That's all I'm going to say about that. So, there was a big bomb in the middle of the city as well. They ended up finding it, and they ended up getting it out. And one of her loyal subjects um, that I, uh a fruit like Dalton that I guess basically he can go and turn into an animal. I forget which type that is. And uh, basically I uh, was able to get it out and he almost died doing it but he able to save the city from the bomb. But anyway she wants to join the crew but she's also a princess so she goes to see him off and say goodbye because she can't join and their departure is just is something else because they can't call out to her because everybody's watching. And so, 
Yeah, right here it is. Sanji, such a pervert. Uh, this was tough too. It's crazy. One Piece has a lot of situations. They grow on you, and it just it pulls at you. I mean, it pulls at you hard. They can't answer. They can't answer. God, God, I got goose. I got gooseies. I got gooseies. Yeah, there's the X. Jeez. This was a big arc, and I didn't realize that Chopper fell into the arc, but he does. And we picked up Miss Sunday. It didn't show it there. Maybe it showed it at the beginning of the other one. But check back next week to see if it shows it in the cutscenes. If not, I'll explain all about it because it's super funny, guys. But anyway, guys, be safe and until next time.